Hi everybody, this is Jimmy, and welcome to Jimmy Does Knitting. We are trying some new things out, as you can tell by, hopefully, what I've been able to edit for the intro and the setup and the lighting, that we're, we're taking a turn with this podcast. Um, I guess we'll just get right into it, because that's where I started, but uh, welcome. Uh, the Christmas time has just passed, we've just had the solstice. Uh, it's in between Christmas and New Year, I have the week off and I decided that I wanted to join you all again. It's been a while. I have had some motivation with trying to get to the new, um, the new stuff and, and how this all works. The previous podcast format just really wasn't working for me. It's great. I like watching other people's, but I knit like two or three things at a time max and it takes me like a month to complete each one of those. Also, I knit in a lot of black, which is hard to show. So, I have done some yoga and thought about this and where I want to go and what will keep me motivated. And I'd like to discuss that before we get into any knitting. Um, just so you know, I want to have a little bit more intention with what I do, as opposed to just showing necessarily objects that I knit. So, there are a couple things to cover. I want to... Go back to why I liked knitting. I like talking about knitting. I talk about it all the time. If I show you just sort of the standard whip and FO parade, then I'm just not gonna talk about knitting the way I want to and what I like to. I like knitting because, uh, you know, there's, I wanna infuse intention behind it. I wanna have a concept behind it. Uh, I'm a trained architect, so I love the design. I love the construction of things. I'm super interested in like fibers and how fibers work and the different types of one and not just like fancy merinos and uh, like properties and like creating things and putting some like deeper thought. I'm not going to get to all that I want to really with knitting. I just, I, I, I can't. There are too many things that I think are beautiful and I want to knit and I just, it's, it's just not a thing. So why am I knitting each object? What am I trying to explore? What am I trying to achieve with these different things? I think that's really what I want to talk about. And I want to talk about stuff that I've already knit because I love the stuff that I've knit and I think it's great and it needs to be celebrated. And yeah, I went through my 2022 things to do or things that I've knit and I was like, oh, I'll just do one of these videos. I've knit a lot. And the answer was, that's not going to work. I have, you know, a bunch of garments and I have frogged one, you know, two fell apart. Uh, the hats I give away, I knit hats on the train as a palette cleanser, and some of them are here, some of them are not. I send stuff to people in America, uh, just like my family and stuff. So it's it's kind of all over the place and it doesn't necessarily make sense to do that or just wait until I have like enough of a sleeve finish to talk about it. So the thought in conclusion going forward is higher production value and we're slowly upgrading. There's a mic coming, there's a better camera coming and uh, talk more less structured and a little bit more fun and concentrate on what really gets me excited about knitting and the craft and different things. And I can nerd out more specifically on stuff and talk essentially about what I want without having to format. So. I also want to incorporate a bit more of my personality and as you saw at the beginning, I am like a super big hippie. That's part of the reason why I knit is because I like the idea of creating my own garments. I know who manufactured it. I know the materials that they're made out of and that they're reasonably um, sustainable and that it like works and that it also brings joy and you have like a unique custom piece and I really think that that's part of the love and care that I want to bring into what I do. And I started off by lighting an incense. I use this brand sometimes. Today we're doing Morning Star in the myrrh. It is really nice, it's like a deep, rich, to me it seems very wintry, um, very bassy, and uh, nice. And more thing is the tea that I like to drink. Uh, today we have a Bengal spice. It has sort of like an Ayurvedic spicy. It's from Celestial Seasonings, just like Cocoa Peru's Tension Tamer Tea. I make it like an English tea where I steep it for a while and then I put in some oat milk and it's sort of a, I don't know, it, it's cozy and comfort. It's my winter, I'm cold, I want like a little treat thing. So we have some tea. 
All that being said, what do I want to talk about? We'll go over some works in progress. We will talk about acquisitions and we'll talk about some older pieces and get into all of that. What am I wearing? I am wearing my self-designed uh, Guernsey, which I've worn a bunch on this channel. I really like it. I think it's my favorite sweater. It's uh, based off of traditional Guernseys in a book that I found about Dutch fishermen's knitting. Uh, it has some cable designs and a little bit of texture. I'm not sure if you can see it because the camera's the other way and I need some more cables, so it's part of the upgrade. Be patient. Uh, it is uh, one strand of uh, whole super soft in black with Rowan felted tweed in black and it's phenomenal. I fixed the collar in one of the videos. It was way too wide based on the pattern that I followed, which is just like a very old, like old, old pattern. And it was just for the general shaping, not necessarily the texture. So what I did is I picked up less stitches around the neckline, I knit it, and I folded it over double. I think that this is a really good thing. I love a double folded collar, but um, this provides structure. Necklines tend to stretch out a little bit. I really like a warm neck. And in general, I like the idea of putting up um, an extra row of stitches to create that structure here. So that way, as your garment wears, it will hold up a little bit better. Also, I find sometimes it sags a lot, especially with these heavier weight yarns. And so it just goes and gets it in a little bit in a way that uh, like knit straight into a yoke or something um, has. So that is what I'm wearing. And I wanted to go over a couple of things. So one, my Christmas sweater. I finally got a chance to wear this. I think that this is phenomenal. This is the Festive Yoke Pullover by Skein Deer Knits. I did it in a whole super soft uh, single strand. And then I uh, did uh, 4.25 millimeters for the color work. And I did 3.75 for the body. I still like this a lot. It's, it's a light sweater. I think that Holst in general for me is a really good yarn and I like working with it and I like wearing it. I don't know if I like it just held singly as a sweater. It's too light for me. I'm very cold all the time and I would prefer like a heavier sweater. So with the color work, it's all right because it's essentially double knitting and I have another sweater that's made out of it, but I... I really am not the biggest fan of just such a light sweater. It looks fine. It's not see-through. It, it works. But just for me, I'm not sure it's the one. And this is another occasion where I had the collar and I picked it up after, after I knit it. And so that way I could get it longer and really come into it. But it was really nice. I got to wear it a couple of times. I, I got compliments on it. I think it looks really cool. It's something special. People didn't necessarily clock it as a um, handmade item, which made me feel really nice. I don't know if they were just flattering or not. So the Skein Deer Knits festive pullover, I would recommend this for you. Uh, another thing that I wanted to do was another pseudo Christmas gift was my vest. I finished this vest. This is a vest that I designed uh, for my boyfriend and he requested a fuzzy vest with black and purple stripes. So I created this pattern. I had to re-knit it a couple times. So the front, I picked up the wrong amount of stitches. And the reason why I did that is because I played with uh, like yarns and how to use them. So this is one single strand of fingering weight yarn. And then I add mohair to it with this. And then this is two strands of mohair. So it's a different stitch count between here and here. And when I split for the front of the vest, I did it with the larger stitch count. So like the, the back piece was like four inches smaller than the front piece, which was not gonna work. So I had to rip it out and redo it again. Uh, but it turned out all right. I had to re-knit the collar a couple of different times just cause I couldn't figure out the decreases with the center. I've never knit with mohair before. I've never designed a vest before. I've never even knit a vest before, but I decided to go for it. So this took a little bit more time just cause I was experimenting and figuring things out, but I think it turned out really well. I think it's a really beautiful garment. It fits him well, and it's definitely something I want to pursue. And you could use like a few like fades and colors and stuff like that. You could maybe do something like a green with like a, a turquoise mohair or something like that. And that way you have like green 
you know, some marl, whatever, to the extent that you want, and then like a, a pure color, and it can play with the color that way. I also think that the smaller like fingering weight for me, this is one by one rib, and one by one rib in hand knitting is a little different than one by one rib in machine knitting. But I do think it gives it that polish and that certain amount of like less handmade. I, I strive to make these a little bit less. I mean, I wouldn't say perfect, but like less like, oh, your grandma knit this. And also because of that, I wanted to do uh, just the one single strand of the fingering weight on the cuffs and the collar. And part of that is for itch factor. Like, I don't know if mohair is going to be great on the cuffs and collar, but I do know that it, 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 it looks good as well. So those were some reasons why I did that, and I have written down this pattern. It's over like 10 pages in my notebook. You should see it. It's crazy. But I, I really got to experiment with shape, texture, uh, using different types of yarn, and combining different types of yarn. So that was that. Plus, he just likes it, and he thinks it looks nice. So he, it's good when he wants something, because I can learn from it, and I can create him something unique that he can't afford or won't get anywhere and that uh, he, I don't know, it's, it benefits both of us. He gets to have a little bit of style and I get to try something that I wouldn't normally try. So that is the vest that I made for my boyfriend. Continuing on, I wanted to talk about my winter, what I'm wearing this winter. On very cold days, I am wearing this Oslo hat by Petite Knit, and this is in West Wool, I think Bicycle Held Double, or it's Tandem. I can't really, I don't really remember exactly which one it was, but it's definitely West Wool. And I, I knit a ton of Oslo hats, and I had this yarn as extra from another project. And what I really like about this hat in the winter is the double folded brim, and over here it's nice and tight on my ears. I think a lot of other hats or some other ones that I've knit when you fold it up, there's like a little bit of air in there and this keeps it nice and tight against the head. So I think that this is a really good hat to wear. It's super warm and the fabric is actually wearing very well. I wear this all of the time and it's a little hairy or whatever from my own hair, but I really, really like this hat and it's by far my favorite. So I enjoy that. Also, I've been wearing my um, fast fashion scarf that I recreated in Holst. This is a lot lighter than the actual um, one. Um, it's really nice though. I love the pattern and it just fits so well. So what I do is I just wear it like this and I typically wear it around the office because uh, the office is cold, everywhere is cold and it keeps my neck warm. As I said before, I have a thing about having a cold neck and so this really drapes uh, it's stretched out nicely. It's beautiful. It's um, next to skin like wearable. I wouldn't say it's super soft like the name is, but it's certainly wearable enough for the sensitive area. And it's uh, like airy and thick enough that it's good. I, I know when you knit it, it feels a little stringy and it feels a little like, how is this ever going to work? But the more you wear it and if you wash it really well with like a good detergent and stuff, it blooms wonderfully and it creeps you nice and warm. Um, one thing about the Holst garments or the garments that I make out of Holst or the accessories is it's just so light. It's so light and it's fantastic. Now I will also say that the color of this does run when you're washing it. So both um, this garment and this garment had like a decent amount of bleed when I did it and it's going for all colors from Holst as far as I can tell. Uh, sometimes it's best then for just to have like a little soak for like five minutes or something so the colors don't bleed. But if you have everything in black, then just leave it for like 15 minutes, a half hour, and it should be fine. It doesn't matter, or at least that's what I do. And I think it's great. Uh, it's, as I wear this, this just gets better and better. And it's not really, I mean, it's stretching out in a way that the pattern stretched out before. It was really bunchy and I didn't like it. Now it's looking more like the original scarf that I had. That I really like so this is a definite favorite and maybe one day I'll write it up uh, it's super easy to do and you can use it with whatever yarn you can make it whatever length you can make it a shorter cowl or not but I will say 
that this was probably um, my second most used wear worn knit of the winter. It's definitely something that I'm super happy that I made. It took forever to make and it was super tedious, but I knew that it was going to be one of my favorites and it is, so that's great. Uh, next thing is we still have my Ryu sweater on the needle. A little bit of acquisitions. I asked for a Hayden hammer bag. I didn't take the tag off still. But I asked for a Hayden hammer bag for Christmas because I wanted it to be bougie. And I think that this is beautiful. If they had black, I would have gotten it. But I think that the ochre is pretty nice. Um, this has a whole sweater in it along with the rest of the yarn that's going to make it. So let's open this. Uh, it has these nice buckles and these nice uh, leather straps. It's huge. Uh, there's not really anything, I mean, there's like some pouches and stuff on the inside, but it's like a nice solid canvas and the bottom is supportive so it can actually stand up, which I think is really nice. One thing I got is I had my brother buy me a bunch of these Addy shorts. I really like the fixed Addy needles. I think that they're wonderful. I mean, of course the cords are not Chaogu cords, but the slipperiness of the Addy needle, needle in general is something that I really like working with. So I highly recommend it, especially the, the fixed needles. They have a good point. I would say like they're medium. They're not necessarily blunt. They're not um, super sharp. And, and so it should be good. So I have a, a 25 centimeters. So I guess this is nine inch circular, but it's the one basically for the socks. I have these in a bunch of sizes. This is 3.5 millimeter because that's the gauge that I'm knitting this on. And then I have my uh, my sweater that I'm working on. I have done, oh, it's a bit wrinkly now that it's in the thing. Where are we? So I have done the body and I've done one sleeve. And it is looking beautiful. I knit the collar a bit longer. It's one by one twisted rib. And I finished this beautiful stitch in the front for the body. I don't know if you can see it or not. You can angle it a couple of different ways. In the back, what I wanted to do is it was supposed to be plain. Well, it's supposed to have like a ridge up at the top here with the pattern and then just be plain, but I wanted to give it a little bit more interest because I didn't want it to be all business in the front and like nothing in the back. So I put this uh, like four by one, five by one ribbing that's the same width as the front pattern. So it echoes it a little bit, but doesn't necessarily distract, detract from it. And then you have this t detail of the stitch down the sleeves and um, into the cuff. So what I've done for this is because I'm not a small Japanese woman, um, the person who wrote this pattern is, I switched the pattern. I wrote my own pattern for the sleeves in terms of the uh, decreases, and it didn't decrease enough. If I'm going to be honest, I, decre I decreased once every seven rows. I should have done it once every six rows. I got the number that I wanted at the, the bottom, but when I actually tried it on, it was too loose. So I, I reduced rapidly for the cuff. But um, I did the short row shaping for the top of the sleeve, the sleeve cap, I guess is what it's called. And then I, I, I redid it for the rest. And I was pretty on with my math and I was pretty surprised. It's going to be beautiful. The construction is something that I really wanted to get into. I this Everybody does top-down radical ends, or at least that's what I feel like. And I wanted to do more, I'm obsessed with structure and like putting in seams or sewing in seams. And a saddle shoulder is something that I don't think is well explored and something that I really want to get into and discover like different types of saddle shoulders and like how to construct it and how to break it down and how to get what I want. It's partially because I have this one um, motif that I want to incorporate, but also I think it's just an interesting um, way to do things, especially if you have like a pattern up into the collar and then it extends down and it's just like a whole thing and you can make something really special on the sleeve. So that's what I'm interested in and exploring with this. The construction was new to me and I'm really enjoying it. I really like this stitch. I really enjoy the texture. I wanted to talk about the yarn as well. The yarn um, is actually becoming a bit like, I don't know, it's like bulkier. I think this would be really good for cables. Uh, it has like a rusticness to it, but it also has a certain plumpness to it. This is Yarbo 2 by Trull, it seems. It's in the colorway black, of course. 
And I almost didn't use this yarn. Honestly, I swatched it and I thought it looked terrible. Um, it seemed like too harsh to work with and the swatch, it sort of like was too airy, too spacey, even with this gauge. But now that I've knit this up, I really think that this yarn is going to be good. Now, the type of wool it is, is apparently just wool, according to the ball band, so I can't elaborate it on it anymore. But it's, it's rustic, but it does have a little bit of a spin to it. It's not itchy, and I think that it has a really good density, and that it will, it definitely grows some when you wash it, based on my swatching. Um, but it also just, I think this is going to wear really well. I think that this is going to be something that's like always in my wardrobe, always on hand, and that um, it will be able to take a little bit of a beating, I think. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to beat up my knits, but in general, this is something that I'm really glad that I, I tried out. And I, I'm quite pleased with the product. I don't necessarily need this sweater. I kind of wish that I would have done it um, for my mom or something. But we'll see. So what the plan is with this is I'm going to America at the end of the month, beginning of February, and I quit my job today, and I'm going to take some time and go to see my family in between. And the plan is, is I'm going to pick up and do the short row shaping, and then on the flight and while I'm waiting in the airport, go for the sleeve and then finish that while I'm there. And that way I can have like a sweater that I, like a knitting project that I could work on, but also a finished garment when I'm there. So I have to like pack less essentially, or at least that's the plan. And uh, because this pattern is, I redid the sleeve pattern and it's just self-explanatory, I think that it should be fine if I get the cap done and then I can just knit on it pretty straight. So that is the plan with this sweater. And then I will wear it there and hopefully it will be done. I usually do a project, like a sweater project, a month. And this is taking longer. It's been like a month and a couple weeks at this point. And I'm a little frustrated that this is on my needles, but I also did another vest in a month. And then I have another project that I'm working on that uh, is the primary focus for now. So this will be done when it gets done and it will be fine. Uh, I am looking forward to going to America because I did maybe order in the Thanksgiving sale uh, a bunch of Hudson and West um, Forge in the color Raven and I'm making the, I believe it's the Svensson pullover with that. It's basically an errand based on the Chris Evans sweater and it is beautiful and I wanted to use that yarn and it is cost prohibitive for me to do with that yarn in Europe. Uh, currently, I'd have to ship it from America, and if I paid full price for the yarn plus shipping and customs, it would be around 400 euros, and I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, I, you have to treat yourself every once in a while, but that's a bit too big of a treat. So I did treat myself, and that yarn is currently at my parents' house. So we'll explore that, and I'm sure that I'll try to do some sort of like blogging, vlogging of like my knitting adventures in America and see what happens. So. Um, that's a bit what's coming up and a bit what's going to get finished, hopefully, this month. So stay tuned for that. Um, another thing I wanted to discuss was this lupa thing that I made. I thought it was such a good idea. I took a makeup sponge um, pattern, which I forget, but maybe I can figure out how to put things on the screen. And I made it a little bit bigger and I made it out of a uh, wee heart yarn in some sort of cotton. And let me tell you, this does not work as a loofah. This does not work as intended. Uh, it just doesn't have enough small little spaces in it. The cotton um, mats really quickly. So basically I feel like I'm cleaning this as opposed to sudsing things up and cleaning my skin with it. So I, I would not recommend this as a, a loofah recipe, but as something that's like a makeup puff, I think this would actually work pretty well. Just wanted to go over that and I'm going to unfortunately toss this. I am using this yarn for something else or the rest of this yarn for something else but we'll we'll get to that. Maybe another podcast, maybe not. We're not showing everything. I have a series of whips over there that we're, we're not going to discuss because it's not necessarily relevant at the moment. 
So the powder puff, no go. One last thing that I wanted to discuss was um, all of my thoughts and feelings about the uh, Hyper Knit Along by Stephen West and doing the Aurora Cabin Shawl. So this is where I am with this. It is uh, four days in. I started on the 23rd, which was a couple days earlier than supposed to because my, um, my holiday started on the 23rd this whole week off and we're going to see how far we can get. The idea is to try to like really work on this and finish it by the time I get to America. I am unclear if that's going to happen but that is the goal and I'm going to certainly push to do it this week. Uh, it's coming along all right. I just don't, what I found is, well I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. Right now I'm not so keen on my color choices that I've done for this. The colors go together really well, but they don't go well together in this order, if it makes any sense. Um, luckily, because it's holst, we need like 350 grams each for the shawl of each color, and um, theoretically that's supposed to be like 100, um, 100 grams skein, but um, 350 meters, sorry, and 100 grams skein. Uh, but the holes comes in 311 meters in a 50 gram skein and I have a 50 gram like little ball and I have two of each and I also have a comb. So let's go over the colors. I have this A crew, which is in a, a cone. Also all five colors are attached at this current moment so it's a big old mess over here. I have this oatmeal color, uh, which I'm going with. There is, this purple is called Princess. It is my favorite. Uh, it's like a light little lavender color. And then I have the, let's say medium blue and then the light blue. I don't know if you can tell if these are, are contrasting enough. Um, and those are the two blues. This is opal and then this is iced. So that's the color I went with. And when you put them all together, I think they look like really nice. And like this, it certainly has like a way of going to it. But when you knit them up, I'm just not, it's just not working. So these, these two specifically are too close. So in some of the patterns, these are together in the order that I put them and I didn't like it. So I had that in the, in here, I had like light blue and then dark blue. And because of the nature of this yarn, it's a bit bunchy and it needs to be blocked and all of that stuff. But you can't really tell the, the, the difference between the light blue and the dark blue here. It doesn't work. I adjusted it to, so the colors go in a different order up here and I'm much happier. So that's one thing. And then also I thought the purple would be the accent, but it's looking like this oatmeal is really sticking out. It doesn't really stick out so much here in this bottom part but it really does for everything else. And so that seems to be the accent color, which has thrown me off a little bit. I wanted to go with like a medium and a light of two different colors. So in this case, it was a neutral and a blue, and then the purple was supposed to be an accent color, but um, the purple and then the two blues are sort of blending into one sort of thing. And then the the acru is another one. And then the, the oatmeal is really just sticking out. And so, I'm not sure I really like that. And what's going to happen in the next two parts is I really think that I'm enjoying the blue vibes of this. And I have, just by the nature of the yarn, I'll have a lot extra of every single color. And what I think I'm going to do is I could resurrect this pattern and this color combination with like a mostly of white with like a little bit of beige in the next part of it, but um, like, and it just, it would have that rhythm. But if I'm going to be honest, I just want to knit it with the blue and I want the edge to be the blue. The edge is supposed to be, I don't know how I'm gonna untangle all of this. The edge is supposed to be these two colors at the, at the very end and I don't like them together. And what I really do like is like little blue and white stripes, like a little sailor's outfit. And so I think that that's super nice. And then, yeah, I just like the blues better is basically what this comes down to. So I'm going to modify it so I can use more of the blues. And then 
Hopefully what that will mean is that I use uh, more of the actual blues yarn and then I can have the, you know, whatever amount of oatmeal that I have for another project. It's enough to do like half a sweater. I swear to God, this, this yarn goes so far. So that's the, that's the plan in terms of that. And I'm knitting this for my grandma. And that's part of the reason why we're on such a timeline. My grandma will be 102 in January. And I would like to give this to her as a gift when I go to America uh, for her birthday. And uh, she is the most knitworthy person. I'm going to try to do another blog blog ab about this whole thing. But uh, she is phenomenal. She's a wonderful woman. Her name is Ruth. She has lived her whole life in south, southern Michigan, northern Ohio. She was born on a farm, one of 11, and she makes the best pies. So that's my grandma. And uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that she got something with whatever. I mean, this is not something I would typically knit, and there are reasons behind why I'm knitting this, but this gives me a deadline. It gives me a little bit of motivation. And it gives me uh, some intention to think about it. And I like the idea of grandma having this. So that's that. Why did I really start knitting this though? It was because I needed to know what the world of Stephen West was all about. I have, um, you know, Stephen and Penelope is my local yarn store. I see Stephen on the bike and all I hear about, especially during MCAL, was like, oh, the shawls, the shawls, the shawls, the shawls, the shawls. What is this? I love knitting the shawls. It's the best thing. Blah, 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 blah. And I wanted to see what it was about. I understand the marketing and I, I see that, but like, what is it? Like, so I needed to try it. Um, I'm not a shawl wearer. I like to knit garments and I knit hats sort of as a, like a, a break. It's sort of my, some people's socks, I do hats. And uh, it's all right. I mean, I understand that there are different techniques and there are different parts and it's usually hard, easy, hard, easy. And you get these all unique and creative patterns. This is not something I would wear per se. And I think grandma will use this more as a blanket rather than anything else. Um, and it's, it's like fun, but it's also uh, sometimes it's a level of concentration that I don't want to have. Uh, if I were to do some of these things with the same level of concentration, I would rather just knit like a cable or a color work sweater because then I still have to count and I have to go row by row and do something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, I get it. I'm glad I've done it. This was the, the grand experiment of uh, knitting shawls. And I'm, yeah, we're there. Am I going to do another one? Not really. If somebody requests one and I feel drawn to the pattern, then yes, but otherwise, no. Um, because I'm knitting with intention and not doing it to stress myself out, but doing it to like learn and grow and do new things. I think one thing that's important to me is I don't like gift knit for people. It's more of, I want to make this thing I have a thousand black sweaters that I've knit for myself. Um, what can I do with playing with a different color and like a different body type or something and give it to people and have them have a little piece of my handcraftedness, whether, you know, I've sent over something to my parents that was an original design. I gave my dad a cardigan that he wanted to knit and I'd never knit a cardigan before. That sort of thing is, is what I want to do, especially if I design stuff for like ladies or lady bodies, then I'll, I'll give it to my mom or my sister-in-law or something. And that way people can have those sort of things from me, which is also why this year-end review stuff doesn't work for me. I, I mean, I've sent half of it away where people have, you know, taken some hats or some of it's like baby clothes and the babies are wearing them. And I think that that's really what is, is great about knitting is to to get it out and not I mean, I'm selfish in terms of the type of projects I want to do but I also realize that I just can't keep knitting for myself that I want it to touch other people's lives in, in different ways and that's really important um, just not only with the finished garment but like 
I want to explore more about like maybe undyed wool. So like maybe I do an undyed wool and make like an errand something for like my dad or um, you know, interact with some local sheep farmers or I don't know. I have a thousand bajillion ideas, but now that I've clarified in my mind that I like, you know, texture, I like the fiber, I want to learn a new skill, I want to learn construction, I want these things to have a little bit more meaning than like, oh, this is cool and I found this pretty color. Um, then I think that that's what I'm going to do. And that's how we're going to go forward with this channel and see what happens. Um, well, there are some plans coming up for 2023. One is let's upgrade this kit a little bit. Another is film more regularly. These style of videos where I just talk about, you know, wherever I've been talking for so long, the sun is setting right now. And um, go through my projects and my, my finished objects and just talk about like the things of knitting that I want to talk about and see if we can infuse a little bit more intention and joy and like craft and like, I don't know. We'll see where this goes. And uh, I'm gonna thank you already for coming with me on this journey. So uh, look for bigger things to come with Jimmy Does Knitting in 2023. And for those of you who are watching, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this. Please share this with anybody um, that you know. I am on Ravelry at uh, Jimmy Does Knitting. That is fairly up to date with things. I don't put my accessories on there. I normally just do the bigger projects like the garments or in this case, the shawl. And my Instagram, I need to figure out how to make the style that I'm using work well because uh, black is hard to, to photograph and then also the way that my pictures are curated for just in general uh, is not working the best with knitting so i have to figure out a different way of representing and bringing in new things and we'll see how that goes maybe it involves yoga i do a ton of yoga i can't right now because i broke my toe um so i'm doing what i call old man yoga but maybe that's you know there's a sense of that that comes into my knitting and is a little bit more prominent especially in these videos um, but also maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming here and looking forward to next year and what I cook up with in my crazy little brain. I'll see you later. Bye.